This kind of industry, this private equity industry, this is how you can get like Elon Musk rich. This is how you get real rich. Wow. They just have unlimited capital in this industry. Why? Because they're smart and they're high finance and they're educated and they know how to do it. And then they know who to sell it to in three or four or five years after that fact. And they know how to grow it. And then they niche out in an in, in, in industry and then they flip it and then they have relationship. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs. Today in the studio, folks, I got a real treat for you. Mr. Andrew Saltman, what's cracking? What's up, Brad? Folks, if you guys don't know this dude, he's the CEO of PVX Advisors, which is basically a private equity slash, you're almost like a hired mercenary. Yeah, maybe a bird dog, intermediary. Hired mercenary is interesting. I've never, that's a new... Well, well, again, I mean, what you do is you bring together companies with buyers. Yeah, like a growth strategist. And buyers with companies. Yeah, I've how, got the the buyers. I've got plenty of those. I've got. How did you get into this? <laughs> uh, Pull that microphone a little closer. Yeah, that's what she said, right? Um, so uh, about in 2010, I took a, a stab at it and uh, it didn't work out. And then I, I stepped into the mortgage industry and the real estate industry. And I got, I got caught up in there and I took my shot in 2010. Real, real big shot. Well, hold on. What do, you mean, what do you mean you got caught up in there? Caught up in mortgages? Like, uh, you know, the money's good in real estate and mortgages. So it's like I was teaching tennis pro for seven years at making not very much money. And so when you were the tennis pro. I was a tennis pro. I was taking a chance. At, so do you play tennis real well? Yeah. I could beat most people. Yeah. Are you like freaking Andre Agassi? No. Well, I went to IMG voluntary tennis Academy. He went there. I, I played pro like in the semi pros, like I would call it like the minor leagues of, could you beat me? Yeah, probably <laughs> smoke me. <laughs> uh, I, I would say like, 90% of people I could beat, I think, yeah. yeah. So you were a good tennis player. Yeah, I taught. I, I, I taught. I still am good, yeah. I taught. I Do you trained. play a lot? Yeah. Uh, now I play not enough, maybe twice a month. I probably should play like three, four times a month, but... You should play three, four times a week, shouldn't you? Yeah, dude. I mean, if you do that, you start having, you know, the body. You know, it, it gets to the body three times, four times. You know, I'm not... I'm 42 now. I'm not... 19, <laughs> you know? So you like to take it easy when you get older, huh? Yeah. I mean, I like to run now. It's lighter on the body. Uh, I work out. I got a personal trainer. Um, but Where do you it, live? Point Vedra pa Beach? Pane. Pane Vedra Beach, Florida. It's uh, yeah, it's pretty. Pane Vedra? Pane Vedra Beach. It's a pretty potent little town, actually. Where? How'd you find that spot? Uh, my sister uh, actually uh married a guy and he went to Flagler College small school in St. Augustine and the rest of the family followed from Jersey and that's that's how we got But St. Augustine is that near there? Yeah, it's around the corner. Same thing. Same thing, yeah. Yeah, St. St. Augustine. Or I'm thinking of St. Petersburg. St. St. Petersburg's Tampa. Yeah, I went to college at University of Tampa. Um the 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 Ponte Vedra Beach is a pretty little potent town. Uh Ron DeSantis used to live in my neighborhood. He's the governor of Florida. Sure. Uh, he lived less than a mile from me. I could have walked. Is, are you, are you voting for him for president? I, I How'd your boy Biden do, by the way? I'm not, he's not my boy. You sure? <laughs> Who'd you vote for? Uh, what was it? Trump and Biden last time? Yeah. Uh, Trump, I believe. <laughs> I think, I don't know. I, I tend to, what not, Biden was it? I tend to not vote sometimes. Cause I, I don't, did you vote? Do you, listen, I say it all the time. Your vote doesn't count. Yeah. yeah. Most, most people like want to fight and argue about that. But the truth is <clears> the gut, the, the president and vice president are, are chosen by the freaking the electoral college. Yeah. Period. Right. So you, when you vote for the president, you think you're voting for which president and it's not. Yeah. Well, Florida is a little bit more, uh, potent than most States though. It, it's, Sometimes the weighted state like Ohio and yeah. a couple others out there. Well, I can tell you that, you know, if you said you didn't vote, it wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me or surprise me. Why? 
Because, dude, like, you're wasting your time, if you ask me. Yeah. Especially when Biden won. Because you already know that was rigged. That was bullshit. There's no possible way in hell. And then what about that old, not old, the the bald guy that, that's floating around him and Joe Biden are talking? I don't know. I don't know. When they're both just straight, can't even form sentences. I don't know. I think they were, everybody was so anti-Trump that... It was just the alternative, you know? Yeah, but there's a new, I think he might be a governor, maybe senator. He's bald. He's like, he doesn't say complete sentences. He's like, it's unbelievable. I don't follow politics. What the hell is this world coming to? But let's not get political. That I want to get yeah. back to investing. Sure. Because because you made a bunch of money here recently. Sure, yeah. Best month of my life. Because you brought a couple people together, a private equity group and an HVAC company. Yeah. Now, did you work with this HVAC company and say, hey, I can go find you people? Or were you working with these people and they said, go find me an HVAC company? So that's that's a great question. Um, I, I was in mortgages and real estate for 10 years. And I took my shot in 2010 to do this. And then I took it again in 2019. I, I missed twice, right? And so I got into mortgages and I made, I mean, I made first month I was out on my own. I made eight grand and that was like a lot of money for me. And uh, I was like, I'm just going to do this. Now, Even growing up in Pawnee v Vedra? I grew up in Princeton, New Jersey, West Windsor, Princeton, Central, Jersey. Um, uh, and an, up, an upscale family. Up, upper middle class, yeah, for sure. Yeah, upper middle. So, so eight grand can't be that a lot to No, you. it's not. But what I was making as a tennis pro, I mean, I was making like 1,500 bucks a month. It, you know, not, not much. You know, did you have any, a month. did you have any rich housewives wanting to do uh, stuff with you? I mean, there were some like at the club, you know, you, you were suspicious, but I didn't really, I didn't really dig in. I had some that, I mean, people had asked me for, they couldn't afford lessons and they, they'd say, can I trade you? Kind of. And you didn't take any, any up? <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> Dude, but it, I, it happens. <laughs> I just wonder what happens at these country clubs when they can't afford lessons. Yeah. Uh, Where'd you teach? Uh, Gainesville, Florida, and Sarasota, Florida were my primary areas. Yeah. Okay, so you're making 1500 bucks. You're teaching people coach. You're, you're coaching people on tennis. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, you said you'd take a stab at it in 2010. You failed. Yeah, I did, yeah. When you say take a stab, how'd you take a stab? I had a, a, a business and I had a uh, client and I had a target uh, for the client and he was good with it and he had a budget and I, I couldn't I couldn't get it to work. Hmm. Yeah. So I mean, I was if, also 30 at the time and I was making $30,000 a month and this deal would have yielded me millions. So, well, if people, if people are still wondering, you know, what it is you do, what is your, like, what is the, you're the CEO of PVX yeah. advisors. What does PVX advisors do? P PVX is like, it's it, PVX means present value of time or money is, was my intent there. Also Ponte Vedra PVX. Um, I, I kind of say I'm, I'm a dream finder. I like to kind of stay out that way. I'll, I'll, so if I said, I want to sell my company right now, yeah, I gave you all the financials and fucking how long would it take you to sell my company? Mm. Not long. Cause you know, people, I'm ambitious. You just start barking up some trees and see if that they liked it or what? Yeah. I mean, you, do you prepare this letter and say, Hey, I have a company that's for sale. This is the EBITDA. No, this I would, I would, I would contact them. I would reach out. I'd go to them. I would relentlessly contact. And in, in, in exchange, firms. in exchange for that. Yeah. I'm giving you 4%. <laughs> so, so that, that's, you know, that's negotiable. I know, but who would give you 4%? That's like equity to mm -hmm. me. Now, if I wanted to sell my company and could not sell my company because for whatever reason, I've tried, I've tried, I've listed it, I've tried, I've done everything, I can't sell it. Mm -hmm. And then you come along and say, I will sell it. Mm -hmm. I'll get you a hundred million dollars, but I want 4%. I'd say, fucking go ahead. Why? Because I'll give you four out of the hundred if you yeah. can go get me a hundred that I can't get myself. So, but why would people give you a 4% equity if, if they can go do it themselves? They can't. Why? That's what I want to know. Cause it's, it's literally 
Can't they knock on the same a, door you're knocking on? They could. They could. They, they def, it's, it's, it's like a foreign land. It's like space. It's like, it's a different atmosphere. It's a different industry. It's like, it's just too foreign, I think, for... But how, not, how did that, you how not, did you learn it? A relentless pursuit to educate myself. I learned on the job also through furious networking. Furious networking. I made so many calls and had so many conversations. I was probably at the top, and you mentioned HVAC. I think you did. But uh, I was probably at the precipice of the HVAC industry a few times in terms of information across the country. Is the HVAC industry right now one of the biggies? That it's it's that, popping. Yeah. Well, they used to be um, HVAC more so. Plumbing. HVAC, plumbing, and electrical, they bundle those three Painting. Trades. What's that? Paint? No. HVAC, plumbing, and Power electrical. Power washing? No. Power washing? Reaches are in the niches, Brad. Power washing isn't a good Negative. one? So you, so if I had a power washing company doing 3 million EBITDA, you, you wouldn't take it? I mean, I don't want to. Why HVAC? Because I got a nice bench of buyers. Well, I know roofing. Roofing is a good one, too. It's a good one. Yeah, that has a nice bench of buyers. HVAC, plumbing, electrical, roofing, and uh, we, we've done restoration as well. So what if I find a roofing company that's doing 11 million Oof. and let's say- Gross or EBITDA? Four, gross. Let's say mm -hmm. about 4 million EBITDA. No, it's not doing four over 11. That'd be too fishy. Let's just say. It's not. <laughs> um, it, I mean, the, the multiple could be uh, on that would be, uh, uh, let's just say it's three over 18. Okay. Three million over 18 gross. More realistic. You'd, or 19 million or 20. Three over 20. You'd get okay. eight, 18 would be your exit. $18 million exit. And people could do this literally from scratch and reverse engineer and retire in three years. It's, this is a real, a real thing. That well, that's what I want to get to because there's people in the bomb squad listening. They've got fucking HVAC companies, bro. I yeah. got people listening. They got roofing companies. I got solar companies. I got real entrepreneurs out there d doing pretty decent, right? They're making seven, maybe even eight figures, but you know, people don't realize you can make seven figures and not feel like a millionaire. Yeah. You can do eight figures and not feel like a millionaire. Why? Because you, you might you'd be making, you know, $20 million a year, but you're only fucking netting two. And out of that, there's taxes. Then you got fucking partners, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So pretty soon it's like, dude, yeah, they're doing pretty well, but like they're not making hundreds of millions of dollars. So how do they do that? Well, they find someone that'll walk in and package them up and right. give them an exit. Right. Where they're getting... How many times you say 15 so times HVAC, EBITDA? I mean, I, I would be cautious about it. Depend, it's heavily tied to gross revenue and EBITDA. So the more EBITDA and the more gross, the higher the multiple. So let's say you're two and a half million over 17 million. You, you'll get a You'll get a 10 X on that. 10 times. Yeah. 10 X comfortably. That is nuts. Dude. Yeah. You would think, you know, cause why is that? That's a big multiple. You know, normally people are like talking three to five times earnings. Depends on the industry, right? So they claim that HVAC and electrical and plumbing, electrical is lower technically, plumbing is higher, but HVAC is the highest because it's recession proof. It's, it's just, it's safe bet. So if I know somebody with a air conditioning company, mm -hmm. HVAC, heating, venting, air conditioning. Yeah. And they're doing, how, what's the minimum they need to be doing? I would say 5 million gross because these P firms don't like to go small, really. Um, is that all you're selling to is the private equity deals? Yeah. And do they come in with real cash or do they, or they do some tricky oh, you, shit? You get the wire at close, 100% of the wire. So no they buy it shit. outright. No tricky shit. It's like dealing with Walmart or something. But I mean, they don't, there's people that'll come in there and, you know, all right, I'll give you $80 million for your business. You know, 71 million is going to be in the form of shares. Mm. So there is a thing called rollover investment. Yeah. So if you, that, that's an option and that can be very lucrative. I know but someone seller. came in here one time, wanted to buy us. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, for how much? And number one, it wasn't no 20 times or 10 times. Yeah. It was like fucking three times. Yeah. And I'm like, that don't make sense. Yeah. I heard SAS models with contracts, 
you know, re- recurring revenue licensing. Like yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting all the check marks with this thing. I thought I'd be like ridiculous multiples. Yeah. So they came in like, I think maybe five, I think it was five times. Yeah. Um, that's weak. I mean, tech yeah. is definitely strong. Yeah, this is a while back, but they yeah. offered 44 mil. That's nice. And I said, and I was thinking about it. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm like, you know, my goal, money. my goal, well, my goal is a lot more than that. So I'm like, but I was getting, you know, I might've been in a bad mood. I'm thinking, okay, so how does that look? Well, we're going to give you $500,000 on closing. <laughs> and then one year, we're going to give you another million. Yeah. And then as soon as we sign though, we're going to give you um, $25 million in shares of our new company, which will now own your company. And so at the end of the day, I would have signed everything, got $500,000 and then a payout over time. Mm-hmm. And then most of my money in, in shares, like, yeah. come on, are you out of your fucking mind? Yeah. So I said, no, obviously. Yeah. I'm like, no, thanks. Right. They're like, well, you want to negotiate? Listen, when I cash out, bro, I want a fucking check. Yeah. A big wire. fat one. Wire. Well, of course, wires yeah. only, dog. <laughs> but I want a big fat one. Yeah. Um, if someone says, hey, I'll give you 10 times earnings. Great. Yeah. It's math. I'll agree or disagree. Yeah. You'll, you'll give me 10x. What was my earnings? Okay. Yeah, that's a deal. Shake yeah. hands. I expect that check before you own anything. Wire. Before you own anything, I want my, that money. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. no, no, you know, performance deals, fucking, you know, half right. shares. Ha- now, if you're publicly traded, like Apple, if Apple was buying me mm-hmm. and they said, you know, we'll pay you in shares, we'll pay you. We, we don't care how we pay you, but we'll pay you. Yeah. Then I would. But a lot of these tricky ass companies, they're coming in there offering shares, which are just fluffy bullshit. Yeah. Well, there's earnouts, which is what you were offered in a rollover investment. Rollover investments are, can be extremely lucrative, just not that, not to that capacity. You want something like 10 or 20% rollover, worst case scenario. If you want 100% exit, that's fine. So how long have you been doing this? Not long enough. <laughs> are you excited now? Is this your new thing permanently? Yeah. So out of the bomb squad, what can they do? Just call you if they have, if they're HVAC companies, they want to sell? Yeah, and what, what I, I have I literally have buyers that are red hot for Dallas for uh, roofers, like, uh, HVAC, plumbing, and electrical. So any HVAC, plumbing, and electrical people, right. call me. We'll get you hooked up. Yeah, we. Then have, I'll call Andrew. I'll carve <laughs> me out a piece. Then I'll flip you to him. Little piece of any, so a fraction of the action, right? Dude, where can they get a hold of you? By the way, uh, I mean, in, I'm on Instagram. Our, our website is gopvx.com. Go PVX. I know there's a lot of people probably thinking, "Damn, dude, like let him talk." Uh, I'm interested in selling, but it's going to boil down to no matter what you say here today. Yeah, you're going to need to talk to people. Yeah. So that's why I'm just cutting to the chase. If you guys want to sell your business, you want to see what it's worth, you want to freaking have somebody come in and do an exit, call mm-hmm. my man Saltman <laughs> and just go to gopvx.com. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, it's simple. Okay, so now let's go back to your tennis coaching. You're not making much money. Then you start making eight Gs a month. Yeah. Let if me circle it, back real quick. Uh, yeah, so we yeah we need, we have a high need if, if anybody's out there for... Louisville and Lexington, Kentucky, Detroit, uh, Dallas, and uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Columbia, South Carolina. We have a very, very high need, and I have they they can pay, they'll pay more than normal for those locations. I mean, I've got a nice list, but those are the ones. Isn't that it crazy? Because there's probably somebody listening. I hope so. That'd be great. There's probably someone I, listening thinking, you know, I've been happy. thinking about, I'm going to call Saltman. I'm going to make somebody really rich and then I'm going to help a private equity firm or you're going to help, right? And a private equity firm help their portfolio. And there, it's it's a whole unbelievable industry that is like, you know, it's like space. It's like, you know, th- th- this kind of industry, this private equity industry, this is how you can get like Elon Musk rich. This is how you get real rich. This is how you, yeah. Wow. They just have unlimited capital in this industry. Why? Because they're smart and they're high finance and they're educated and they know how to do it. And then they know who to sell it to in three or four or five years after that fact. And they know how to grow it. And then they, 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 they niche out in an, in, in an industry And then they flip it and then they have relationships to uh, 
for to like teachers pensions for example that have just ungodly amount of money and then they they give a you know they have whatever dollars and then they give the pe funds a billion or two billion and go do your thing and they have to spend it and if they don't it goes back and that's called dry powder. Hey, you wanna spend an hour a week with me helping you become a business badass? Well, check out my group in the link below. So it's important for them to find deals. <laughs> now, why? how did you learn this? College or just online research, Google, what? So uh, my, my friend of 20 years asked me to help him sell his business. And he was making about two and a half million a year. And I, I was like, yeah, man, let's go. And that was in 2019 and I, I, I failed. And uh, I, I recently succeeded at that. I figured it out. I've just, I, trial and error. I didn't have a mentor. And I know you don't, I, 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 I kind of had a mentor, but I didn't. I just figured it out. I'm sorry it figured out so late. I'm 42 years old. I wish I figured it out sooner, but everything well, happens for a reason. Back here. This little thing says your early entrepreneurial endeavors as a paper boy and yeah. CD burner. Yeah, I was a paper. I was a paper boy. Yeah. And then to your impactful roles <laughs> in the Venezuela's sports industry. I, no, I don't know what that says. Uh, what is that? ChatGPT wrote that. Um, <laughs> uh, I worked uh, for Sportsbook.com. Actually, did you work with the New York Yankees? I did work for the Yankees for four years. Yeah. I'm a baseball junkie. Uh, I work. I worked for Sportsbook.com. They had a 120 million dollar exit, but I was just a employee at that time. They were based out of Margarita Island, Venezuela. That was. Uh, they're all a uh, bunch of them are in Vegas now, actually. Do you like to play chess? I love chess. I bought RealChess.com. Huh. I hope I bait you into something with that. Maybe one of these days you will. <laughs> Do you have anything there? I just bought it because my brand's like a called, month ago. my brand's called real <clears throat> I know. whatever. So if I ever did anything with chess, it'd be real chess for so sure. Here's the thing about that. My son, he plays chess. He's good. They play on a site called lie chess L I. And I just kept thinking, why not? Re why not real chess? It's so dumb. You know, I was like, so I looked it up and go daddy owned it. And I negotiated with go daddy to purchase it. And so I bought it. Now you're the proud owner of realchess.com. Yeah. I mean, <coughs> I own it. Yeah. If somebody but, but wants to buy it, I'll sell it. How much? 25. 25 bucks? K. I'll take it. Done. 25 bucks? No, 25K. Oh, I thought you said 25 bucks. No, no, you said, okay. I paid way more than that. <laughs> What'd you pay? Uh, six. That's what they charged you? Uh, they asked for 12. I got them down to six. They fought me like forever on it. Yeah. I love negotiating. Well, why'd you buy it if you're if you not going to do anything with it? Maybe I will. You're just a freaking, almost like an investor, aren't you? I mean, when you start making, you know, money, you need to put it places. And I like to diversify. And I don't believe in a lot of things. And I believe in me. And I believe that if I wanted to do something with it, I could. Do you believe that children are our future? <laughs> yes, 100%. Should you let them lead and let them? Yeah, I think kids are way smarter than us, actually. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see you gulping. <laughs> uh, I think if kids ran our, <laughs> my business, or it, we, it'd be better. Are you a seeker of wisdom and personal growth? I, I believe that there is, <coughs> yeah, for sure, 100%. I think that there's, uh, we're in a society of uh, too much information and not, enough, not and not enough wisdom these days. It's internet, you know, too much info, not, no wisdom. So how long have you been doing exactly what you're doing right now? PVX advisors. I mean, so that I, I, that's under the umbrella of my real estate company. So I've had that for 10 years, but, it, yeah, but how many really, like this is your best year yet. You said, yeah, best you, month. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the year still. Yeah. Yeah. You've never had a year better than you've made in a week. Mm, no, I don't know. I kind of, I don't the, understand the that. commission that you just said you made. Yeah. That's the biggest commission you've ever made in your life. Yes. Yeah. Which makes sure. this whole entire year, even though you have plenty left. Yeah. The biggest year you've ever had mm -hmm. yeah. in your entire life. Yeah. Big time. But it was just one commission. I had another one, uh, recently as well. Yeah. Yeah. So before that, like you were running around, 
Mm -hmm. said it didn't work and I tried and it didn't work. You weren't able to connect the buyer with the seller. What was the problem? I did, but I realized that there's more to it. Um, you got to put in FaceTime. I was attempting to be like an armchair quarterback. And I realized that when I started to put in the FaceTime, I was getting shit done. So, yeah. And I'm also always thinking about opportunity for people listening. Cause like if Andrew Saltman can freaking, you know, stop being a tennis pro, yeah. start pounding doors, hang gladden, meeting people and make 1.2 million selling the deal. Yeah. And you can do five of those a year. Yeah. Right. Well, I did another one for 400. Yeah. But uh, like, wouldn't, let's say the average is only a hundred grand. Like, so what? Like, yeah, dude, I can go right. pop one of these a month. Like yeah. we're good. Right. So well, how, so how does somebody listening say, Hey, I want to do what Andrew's doing. I don't is want it, him to. I know, but like, do you have to go <laughs> stay have, out? But, but yeah, you got to get it. You guys, you didn't get it. What's for, that? For a long time, you didn't get it. No, I think it's very hard to understand. It's a whole different language. Like I said, I think it's like being an astronaut. It's a What'd whole you different read? language. Oh man, there, there, I mean, I hate to, to put it out there, but there is, there are two books that just kill it. Which uh, are? By Adam Coffey. Uh, that guy just crushed it. I read probably a dozen P private equity books and his are by far the best. They're Adam in, Coffey. Yeah. But you won't tell us the book. Oh, it's, I mean, he only wrote two. What uh, are they called? Private eg equity exit and exit playbook. Something and like it that. Teaches you pretty much everything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it took me a while to find it. You know what I mean? Do you think one day you're going to be making millions of dollars and it's all going to be because of Andrew Coffey? I might. I thought about hiring him. Yeah. I already got a quote on hiring him. Dude, you're very cryptic in your responses. Like you're Because, you know, because I, I don't, I like to be, I don't like, I, you know, I, I, you know, Elon, like Elon Musk likes to share. Maybe I should be more like that. You know, he likes to just tell the word and give it out. For some reason, I don't, I, I like to keep it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> maybe i should i mean i'm hey, giving a lot of it truthful. away man i gave a lot of it away i mean honestly i haven't not told you and i've not with i've not withheld withstood anything well withheld. at least you've at least you're willing to admit that yeah. hey you don't want a bunch of people doing this no you think if everyone knew how easy it was they'd just be rushing in it's not easy i don't think i really i really don't it's well you not. just made a million two in a week one six. There was another deal too. Yeah. So in a week. Yeah. How, how's that not easy? I mean, it wasn't overnight. I mean, that one was, uh, you know, roughly we can, we could argue 13 months in the making, but probably more list, more realistically six. And the other one was six months in the making. So there's an average six month cycle right now. No, I had to build the relationship. But how long did that take? I mean, one was my friend. Yeah, right? but like one of these days, let's say I want to actually sell and I'm Let's say serious. three. Let's say th I, I was able to build a relationship in two face-to-faces. But let's say one day I want to sell this thing and I'm serious. Because yeah. right now I know I can scale the, the, the business and I'm, and I'm doing that. Yeah. And it's almost like a puzzle to me until I fucking scale it to a point where it's like now it's crushing. Mm -hmm. I feel like it ain't, I ain't going to sell it. Why? Because whoever buys it cheap because I couldn't get that to happen is going to do that and then make a killing. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, what's wrong? You'll still get yours. Cause yeah, but you get, have all these other businesses. I know, but I'd get a whole lot more. I get a whole lot more. Yeah, but if like, I just look at, be look at the future, like solar. Why is, did Mark Zuckerberg turn down a billion dollars? Listen, answer the question. Yeah, but he was also like 20 years old. I don't care. Answer the question. Cause he was 20 years old. That's why probably what's that got to do with it? I don't know. He didn't care no, about the money. He Maybe he didn't more. care about the money. Exactly. Yeah. He valued it more. Yeah. I value this place more than I would get. Now, yeah. if someone said, I'll give you a billion dollars, motherfucker, dude, let's go. I'll right. give you 4%. Why? Well, you have to start but sharing But nobody, but nobody's, I already know my info and well. I know no one's going to do that. Okay. Yeah. Well, what do I tell me? And I'll tell you, I already know, yeah. motherfucker, I'm not stupid. Yeah. No one's giving me See, a billion you're dollars. now. Nobody's <laughs> giving me a billion dollars for this company yet. I would have to do at least five to 10 times the revenue which I can do, but I got to take shit seriously. And like you said, I got a bunch of companies that honestly might be a problem for me. What? I have too many right. things. Yeah. I over diluted. Right. And what I need to do is, and what I'm in the process of is uncomplicating a bunch of shit. Do it. Wow. Well, trust me. I am. Yeah. And I, it, it, maybe even concluding 
light speed. Like, what does that mean? Well, shit, I've thought about like, hey, like you said, find a GM, find somebody. Yeah. Right. Problem is, is I've tried to find people, but you got to be a, you got to know some shit to run this place because it's a unique place. Like I started an industry. Mm -hmm. it, there's not a bunch of them out there. Now there is. So now if I were going to steal somebody from another LMS provider or something, go hunt, uh, head hunt somebody yeah. that, that's growing, you know, a, a competitor, then I could. But when mm -hmm. I started this dude, there was nobody. So there's yeah. a lot of stuff that I know and, and, and realize and, and almost invented that I can't just transfer. So I can't just say, oh, here's the process. Because if they come in here and do what we've been doing, they're going to get what we've been getting. They got to come in here and do something different. Mm -hmm. Now, how yeah. are you going to do something different if you don't know what to do? I mean, we talked about that previously when we were having that peanut butter milkshake. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I think that there, there, there's a lot of virtual training in, in uh, colleges and universities sure and executive education. Yeah, but they use, they use a lot of uh, academic software like Blackboard. There's, mm -hmm. there's a software called Blackboard. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of competitors to Blackboard, all of them worth hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars in revenue. There's Cornerstone. Yeah. Okay. There's all these ones, but those are academic uses. If I showed them light speed, they would yeah. not use it for academic because they don't believe that, that, uh, interactive on demand videos can train and teach people. Yeah. But you they have a better mousetrap. They think right? you need a teacher. You have a better mousetrap. I mean, yeah, you can have a teacher within your system, I believe. Like not they live. Ask the I mean, I guess you could. No, but nobody's again, live. Nobody's academic. live in these I'll, systems. Brad. I'll tell you what I'll do. Nobody's live in these systems. Yes, they are. No, they're not. Want to make a million dollar. Not, I've been through them. When you say through them, what do you mean? Like all these certifications at Harvard. Yeah, you're talking about the online courses that mm -hmm. they have. Yeah. yeah. Again, online courses is just an online hosting solution. Right. Yeah, like they could all put it on Lightspeed and look better, but yeah. same job will get done. They'll just, they'll just upload a video. Right. I mean, you can argue it anyway. Look at like Instagram got bought up, gobbled up by Facebook for a thousand X. You know what I mean? So Can you imagine too? I mean, you know, they probably were making no money, you know, so, you, you know, you could say your technology is your, your, your unique ability or what they're acquiring. All right. So here's what I can do. I can tell the bomb squad if they want to sell their HVAC, what, what kind of name the companies HVAC, HVAC plumbing and electrical is, if they know, want, I, I can, we can move those. Okay. Guys, if you guys have an HVAC plumbing or electrical company that you've been operating, you're getting tired of operating it. Maybe you're getting, you know. Board, who knows? We're getting to age of retirement, you just want to sell, okay? Reach out to my man, Andrew Saltman, or reach out to me and I'll get you in touch with him. But you can go to gopvx.com. You can go DM him on Instagram at Andrew Saltman. Yeah. Um, on Instagram and sell your company. Yeah. And, and dude, if a million people come sell the company and make you millions of dollars, don't forget OBL. Uh, yeah, for S sure. Send big dog like a, a, a Ferrari or something. Okay. And, yeah. uh, and, and when, and if I'm ready to sell my company, which yeah. I will be eventually, yeah. perhaps I'll call you to give you a fair shake. <laughs> then I can answer all your questions. Sure. But you know, they're not the numbers you were talking about earlier. Yeah. But, I don't, well, I don't know. I don't know. What yeah, but those are big numbers. Yeah. I don't know what you're, what you're doing. Oh, uh, we need to get there. <laughs> uh, if gotcha. I'm there now, I got a billion dollar exit. Okay. I mean, there, there's other angles, you know, I think that. But I needed, but I told you I needed about five X, yeah, ten X to get where you're talking about. Ten X what you're currently at. Yep. Okay. So I mean, even if you exited now, you know, per se, you could throw it into another business that I know that you could more. rationalize why sell out early and give up and fucking not stick with what I wanted and you know, right? I got you. Yeah, I mean, you know, like so, like solar. Ah, you know, you gave it the old college try, right? <laughs> Exactly. Hey, every hey, no, there's no shame in cashing out with 80 no. million. Is there? <laughs> no, I mean, it, there's it, no shame in that. Even though, by the way, when you cash out for 80 million, then how much are they going to take in taxes? Uh, let's just say 20, 25%. Okay. Now how much you got left? 80. I mean, you know, 20% of 80, 16 million. So say yeah, 64. 20. Yeah. Okay. Then you got partners. Let's say 40% worth. Yeah. If All you right. have partners. Yeah. All right. So you're now you're only taking home 60. Yeah. No, I that, get it. I mean, that. when you chop it up, I mean, there's a lot of hands in the cookie jar, you know, and, 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 it, and it can be. Then you pay personal taxes. No. You don't? No. It's selling a business is different. So the capital gains is it. That's it. People think it's 40, 50%. That's not true. 
But partners is a problem. Yeah, that's why they have to grow those businesses bigger. Like I have one that I'm working on that's tough because it has four partners in it. And they all, you know, when $20 million across four people isn't as much as you think. It's 5 million bucks, and but then, they have a 20 bottom but, line. But meanwhile, know? they have a company and everyone's yeah, like- they make about a half a million each on it, you know, and it's comfortable, but like, yeah, sure. Maybe one wants to leave, you know, he's more entrepreneurial. The other one doesn't because he doesn't know how to do anything else. You know what I mean? So it is what it is, you know. Dude, I'm going to start a company with you. Let's go. And all I'm going to do is talk about it on every podcast. I'll get the sellers. You bring the buyers and we're in business. You'll get, I got this. Oh you, yeah. Done. Yeah, yeah. You got, I've got the buyers. You got the buyers. I've got I'll the buyers. get the sellers. Yes. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start is, finding no, companies. Yeah. I mean, what do they need? If I were to like, buddy calls me, they hear this. They're like, dude, I got an HVAC company. You told me to call. I yeah. said, great. What questions should I be asking them? TTM. What's your trailing 12 months? Okay. They say 11 million. Gross. Yes. That's fantastic. We're going to get you. Uh, what do you, what do you make? And then next question, what are you making on that? Probably two. Two. Great. Um, I, we can probably get you at least 16 million, m- maybe 20 exit. So eight All cash. So eight to, uh, I say 11, 20. you said 11 million gross to, to, yeah, two, two net, million net. You said six, 16 million. I'd say that's, at least 16. Okay, so that's eight times. 8X to 10X. To 10X. I, I'll be, I'm being careful. Like we could possibly get an 11 or Depends 12. on the factors. It depends on a lot of things. Location, uh, quality of people, culture fit. Um, Why wouldn't everybody do how that? How many locations? How many, what, I told you it's like space. Like people don't know this industry exists. There's, do you know who a lot of these billionaires are? They work in private equity. They work in acquisitions, mergers and acquisitions. They just, they come they in and buy in revenue. Hmm? They just come in and buy revenue. Mm-hmm. That's really what they want, right? They want the the net. They want the EBITDA. So here, here's the play, right? If I'm ABC private equity and I go and I buy 10 HVAC companies at 1 million EBITDA each. And I pay them 8X, let's just say, which is strong. I would go with seven. That means you're out of 80 million so, in the so, bank. Se- yeah, let's just say eight, right? But now I have a company that is 10 million EBITDA, right? Guess what I'm getting on a 10 million EBITDA company? A lot more than eight, right? And then I wait three years and I grow it. And all of a sudden it's at 15 million EBITDA. I'm flipping that for 300. So I'm in, in at 80 and I'm out at 300. That's $120 million in three to four or five years. Yeah, they're playing big, big money. This there. is, this is. I know a guy that's doing this, dude. He was level. just on my show. I need to introduce you guys. Sarasani, I think, or I, I heard Martel. No, but John Sarasani. Sarasani, Martel, Mello. All these guys are playing this game. They are well, they're doing very well. I'm well, sure. Dude, I'm going to join in that game. Me and you are going to talk I want to start a mastermind and do it. That, Folks, that you guys heard thing. him. Go pvx.com, Andrew Saltman. Until next time, keep it real. Why can't we get to a billion? Now, if you ask me that, Brad, why can't you? My answer will be different than why haven't you, okay? Why can't I? My answer would be I can, and I am. I'm on my way. I'm headed there. I'm doing the work. I'm going. It takes time. Do you guys realize how many are in a billion